Okay, let's start describing the first part, the first portion of your respiratory tract, which is your nose and your nasal cavity. Now, the external nose, what is forming the external nose? Well, remember, and this is woo, back then and at the beginning when we were first met, uh, at the beginning of the curse. So the bridge of the nose consists of the two nasal bones, remember, and the lateral wall of these, of the nasal, of the external nose, these parts consist of the maxillary bone on either side. Now, distal to that, the tip of your nose consists of hyaline cartilage, okay? And that's pretty much it, it's the, the external part. Now, right in the midline, in the normal nose, in the midline, there is a septum, a wall, a partition that divides your nasal cavity into two uh, nostrils or two uh, uh, nasal cavities, the right and the left, like my kids will say, into two noses. So this partition or the nasal septum consists also of a bony part and the distal portion is hyaline cartilage, flexible hyaline cartilage. Now, the bony part, if you remember, the superior portion consists of the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone and the inferior portion consists of the vomer. Um, okay, these, the, uh, these openings are the, your nostrils, are the external nares. Now, oh, okay, oh, super fast. Okay, good moment also to remember that continuous or like expansions of these uh, inside the nasal cavity, we have the perinasal cavity, um, or per, I'm sorry, perinasal sinuses. Remember, our chambers or uh, hollow spaces or cavities within your facial and some skull bones that are lined by the same epithelium, the same mucosa that you can see inside. I'm not going to show you my nose but that you can see lining inside of your nasal cavity. Ah, same epithelia. So remember that we have four uh, bones that shows or, or, or have these uh, perinasal sinuses. In the skull, we have the ethmoid and the sphenoid and facial bones. We have the maxillary, and I forgot to mention the frontal bone and the skull. Uh, Functions, since is, can you see that they are all just um, extensions of the same nasal cavity with the same type of tissue? They have exactly the same function, okay? So they warm, they filter the air that is inhaled, inhaled they humidify it, they warm the air, the air that is inhaled. All of these, the nasal and the perinasal, um, uh, mucosa consists in pseudostratified columnar cil ciliated epithelium. So if you remember, this cilia can move in one direction, uh, sweeping uh, pathogens or any uh, unwanted uh, particle, dust particles, debris from these cavities, from the nasal cavity and uh, perinasal cavities to the deeper into the nasal pharynx and from there you swallow it and it's just they are destroyed in uh, by the gastric juices acidic gastric juices into your digestive system uh, these epithelium also have a lot of goblet cells that produce mucus and these mucus create all in the surface of these perinasal cavities and into the nasal cavity, they create a film of a sticky fluid that helps to trap these debris, dust particles, even a mosquito, uh, to avoid the entrance into 
for their portions of the respiratory tract. It also has zero, serous uh, um, cells that produce serous fluid, and this serous fluid contains almost the same enzymes that are present in the saliva that can, they're proteolytic and hydrolytic, that can destroy uh, any invader that wants to get past through our nasal uh, cavity. Okay, what else? Let's describe the nasal cavity inside as the nasal, as the cavity, okay? We described already the external skeleton, the perinasal sinuses, now let's go inside. And how do we get in? Through that internal nares. And when we get in, the first thing that we're gonna find is this reception hole, which is called the vestibule. So these are your external nares. Nares, and this is the vestibule. And the vestibule is where we find all of the well, there's sebaceous and sweat glands also, but also the hairs that again, same function help trap all of those big dust particles. Now, when the air gets in, it's going to find these three ridges that you know that are called the superior, the middle and the inferior nasal conchae. And they are, remember, projections, the superior and the middle are part of the ethmoid bone and the inferior is a nasal bone and they're covered, as you can see, or yes, covered by the nasal mucosa. What they do are these ridges that project inside your nose. So if, if you ha happen to have them inflamed or high hypertrophy, the, uh, you have a hypertrophy of the, the mucosa in this um, um, conchi, nasal conchi, you will uh, be able to see it. When you just see with the mirror, you can see your own nose. Um, and what they do is that when the air bumps or hits these ridges, the air, you know, go crazy creates turbulence in the air, the air swirls, and that allows more time for the air to circulate in there. The blood vessels, which are, there's a rich supply of capillaries right underneath the epithelium. Uh, it has a lot of time to warm and humidify the air before it reaches distal portions of the respiratory tract. In between these inter, uh, the superior middle and nasal conchi, we have these, I don't know if you can see it, these grooves, which are the meatuses. Okay, so these are the superior, the middle, and the inferior uh, nasal meatuses, where the air actually flows through. Uh, the last uh, or the posterior end of the nasal cavity consists of, how do we call these? External nares. So we're going to call this internal nares. Okay? And uh, also called koana. We, I'll show you a picture later. Uh, that opening that you can see in there is the connection between the nasal cavity and the next portion, which is the nasopharynx that I'm going to explain in the next video. Now, another thing that we can see in this picture is the roof of the nasal cavity that consists of, this is your, uh, here is the sphenoid and here is the ethmoid bone. And the floor of the nasal cavity consists of the heart palate. Touch it. Okay, your heart palate that separates the nasal cavity from your oral cavity. Um, what else? Well, in here we can see the, and I showed you this before in nervous system, I guess. Uh, but how, to, to show you how the nasal cavity holds the organ of, or the receptors, for smell. Remember, they're located on the most superior portion of your nasal uh, mucosa. In um, here are the sensory receptors that detect the 
chemical particles that activate these receptors and send the signals inside the brain through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid brain. So in the next video, let's describe the next portion of the respiratory tract, which is the pharynx, which first part is the nasopharynx. See you.